20 plus years ago, you had this guy looking like this. And now jump to 2020, you have him doing this. So somebody tell me again that global warming isn't real. Yeah, I stole that joke from the internet, but I kind of thought it was funny. So The Boys is a show that premiered on Amazon Prime last year and is based off a graphic novel of the same title written by Garth Ennis and drawn by Derek Robinson. And I actually did a non-spoiler review of last season, which you could click the link for that up here. And for this particular season, I'm not gonna go like full in depth with every single episode and every single storyline, but I'm gonna talk about this show assuming that you've already watched it. So if you have not watched season two of The Boys and you, or you haven't watched The Boys at all and you want to know whether season two is worth it or whether this show is worth it I suggest you go back and watch my season one review and watch season two and then come back and watch this review but yeah so there you go you've been warned but yeah if you watched my season one review again right here you'd know that I really enjoyed season one of the boys and it was actually one of my favorite shows of 2019 and it was something that I'd never seen before. It was different. Like it took the superhero genre and it took everything that we think we know about superheroes and it basically flipped it on its head. And it also put superheroes in the real world in the sense that it corporatized these superheroes. And it was something that I found really intriguing. And plus, more importantly, something I always say that I enjoy my fantasy. This show gave me blood, sex, gore, and magic. Now granted, nobody in this show actually wielded magic, but it's a show about superheroes. It's basically the same thing. And so based on how I felt about season one like I was hyped going into season two so the question is did season two live up to the hype that I had for season one well let's talk about it so season two pretty much opens up right after you get that jaw-dropping cliffhanger at the end of season one where you find out that not only is Butcher's wife Becca still alive but she also has an eight-year-old son who is the son of Homelander and Homelander himself didn't even know that he had a son and the world is also reeling from the fact that Compound V is what created the soups and it wasn't baby I was born this way born this way I don't know why I did the single ladies <laughs> like I am gonna come out and say that I didn't really enjoy this season as much as I enjoyed season one now with that said because I know nuance does not exist on the internet that does not mean I hated season two I ultimately I still enjoyed season two I just didn't enjoy it as much as season one and part of the reason for that is I know it's a personal thing for me but you're coming here from my particular review on this show and the reason that season two didn't hit for me is it's a couple of reasons but I feel like with this year being such a tumultuous year where you got COVID-19 affecting black and brown people more than anybody else you got massive unemployment again affecting black and brown people more than anybody else you got so many unarmed black men and women being killed at the hands of the police you got Black Lives Matter protests happening across the nation and really across the world the death of Chadwick Boseman and then you have the and then you have he that shall not be named this terrible president in the White House I don't know like for me the boys just hit differently this season and part of it is also because of all the things that I named and then you're watching this very white show and then not only that they introduce this character which I know is comic accurate of course they changed the gender around but then they introduced this character of Stormfront who I call <laughs> culturally appropriated Storm from X-Men even though I know they don't really have the same powers but I'm like the outfit and all that I'm like she's white Storm and then it's revealed that Stormfront is basically a Nazi. And then in, I believe, the second episode, she kills an entire apartment building of, of black people. And then the things that she says to like A-Train's character or Kimiko's brother, who she kills, like, I don't know, it just hit me differently this season. Again, like I said, I'm talking about this show as assuming that you've watched the entire season. But even jumping to the end, where you had Queen Maeve, Kimiko, and Starlight beating the hell out of Stormfront, yes, I really enjoyed that moment, and I love to see her get her comeuppance, but at the same time, I was still like, where's the black women getting their revenge on Stormfront? Especially once you get to episode four, and you learn what she did to this black family, I'm like, how come there's no black people getting revenge on her? And that's another 
another thing that hit me differently on the show. I was just like, as I was watching it, especially after that moment where she destroyed a whole entire apartment building with, with black people in it, I was like, there's not really any black women on this show. Now, that's not to say I didn't notice it last year or I didn't have a problem with it during season one, but I don't know. It's just this year, again, it just hits differently. And then even the black male characters that are on this show, A-Train and Mother's Milk, like going to A-Train, like they didn't really have much to do this season. A-Train was just there. Like, yes, at the end of the season, he had a big moment in the fact that it was him that brought the files to the boys. And because of him, Starlight was exposed to the world as a Nazi. And also because of that, he had his redemption moment where he got accepted back into the seven. But even still, overall, his character was just there. And also you got somebody like Mother's Milk played wonderfully by Laz Alonzo. Yes, he was there with the boys. He participated in basically every single scene, but even he was just there. I felt like even all the other boys had their own separate storylines, but him, he, again, he was just there. And you have the legendary Giancarlo Esposito, who was, who was revealed to be the CEO of Vault America. And even though he had a couple great moments, like the one moment that he had at the end where Butcher confronts him about the fact that he's promoting Stormlight, knowing that she's a Nazi, and he's like, of course I hate her, but I I can't go rampaging around like a maniac. That's a white man's luxury. Or he says something along those lines. Yeah, that was a great moment. But ultimately, I feel like even though he was kind of supposed to take the place of Stillwell from season one, I feel like Stillwell had more of a role last season than he did. Ultimately, he was just there. And after watching a show like Lovecraft Country, which is very black and black centered, you got black people wielding magic. You got black people in haunted house situations. You got black people adventuring like Indiana Jones, something my black gay soul has wanted since forever to have black people be the center of sci-fi fantasy horror stories like after getting that week to week and then watching this show that I did love last season and then have the black characters not really play a role in the storyline and I get ultimately everybody in this show are assholes like even the boys themselves even though they are the protagonists they're all murderers liars cheats but it's like I would like to see some black losers I would like to see some black women assholes I would like to see some black women murderers and stuff like that but you don't really get that so again this season for me hit differently i know it probably won't feel that way for other people but again this is my review this is my opinion and that's just how i felt going into watching this season but yeah enough about that because that ultimately wasn't my only problem with this season and i know it kind of sounds like that i'm being very negative but i just want to get my negatives out the way so i can end on a positive note because ultimately like i said i did enjoy season two just not as much as season one but also growing back to my gripe of characters not having a lot to do I feel like the like the script just wasn't as tight as it was in season one like I feel like certain characters they just didn't know what to do with a train being one of them and then also you got the character of the deep ultimately I feel like his storyline went nowhere it felt like they, they were kind of going a redemption arc with his storyline but ultimately by the end of the season it amounted to nothing like there's a character I mentioned in my intro you got Sean Ashmore who played the character of Lamplighter even though he was only in the show for maybe two or three three episodes and I, I had more empathy and enjoyed his character way more than I did the deep but yet they ended up killing off Lamplighter but the deep was still alive like if I had my choice I would trade off Lamplighter for the deep now granted even though Chase Crawford is someone nice to look at I still ultimately felt nothing for his character also how the hell did Becca escape the vault safe house that she was in for the la the past eight years? She makes it sound like that there's security cameras, there's guards at every single post, but yet she was able to escape pretty easily because it makes it seem like she's in the middle of nowhere, but she was able to find Butcher in New York very easily. I thought that was pre I thought that was pretty convenient. But yeah, overall, I think those were my gripes with season two. But what they did give me, I did enjoy it. Like I enjoyed Queen Maeve's story storyline and to see her be so entrenched for years in the vault propaganda only to have her slowly come back to how she originally was because you got from season one that when she first came to vault when she first joined the seven she was almost kind of as doughy eyed as starlight was but then once she saw that everything that went into being a superhero the light and hope that she once had to be a superhero slowly leave her you could probably and you could kind of tell that's why she started to become an alcoholic but to see her slowly get that hope back 
back by the end of this season where she did help them take down Stormfront. Like I enjoyed watching her storyline unfold. And ultimately you could just tell that the cast and crew really have faith in this property and really enjoy working with each other. And that comes across very well on the screen. Like, like the chemistry that these actors have with each other and just in the overall fun that you have watching these characters on screen. Like that's fun. And then also like there were a lot of moments that I did laugh at this show. Like there were a lot of funny and comedic moments, especially when it came to the deep, like the moment where he's trying to connect with his body dysmorphia issues and his gills end up singing, you are so beautiful to me. Like I thought that was funny or the moment he tries to chase after the boys where they're in that boat and he summons the giant whale and the boys end up crashing into that whale and end up killing that whale. Like I wasn't expecting that. And I was like, oh my God, like I thought that was funny. And then of course the acting on the show, like the, there was no weak performance from any of these actors. Like I hated Stormfront's character, which means Aya Cash did a brilliant job portraying her. And then of course it goes without saying, like everybody's talking about Tony Starr's Homelander. Like he's of course the big draw for this show. But for me, I gotta give the biggest shout out to Karen Fukuhara's character who plays Kimiko. Like she has to portray so much emotion without saying a word of dialogue. And any actor would tell you that not speaking and still having to emote is way harder than having dialogue to rely on. Like even the cast of Buffy the Vampire Slayer talked about that when they had that episode of Hush, where they had an entire episode where they couldn't talk. Oh, and overall, I think Kimiko is one of my favorite characters in the whole series. And then Karen Fukuhart, like she is so pretty. Like, oh my God, every time I see her on screen, I'm like, God damn, she is so pretty. And I just enjoyed seeing more of the corporatization and the commoditization of the whole superhero brand. That's something that really appealed to me in season one is something I thought was very different because we all know if superheroes existed in the real world somebody would be trying to make a profit off of everything because in the real world they're always trying to figure out a way to make money off of something like if corporations could figure out how to profitize the very air that we breathe they would do it and a lot of the dialogue and story beats especially when it comes to Stormfront are stuff that's taken right out of the headlines of, of, of today and that's something that I enjoyed seeing play out and the special effects for this show were, were great but yeah overall I do feel like this season was a lot slower than season one. Like I feel like season one was just every episode was just going at a breakneck pace. And that's not necessarily a bad thing for this season, but I feel like this season would play a lot better through watching on a binge as opposed to watching week to week. Like I think last season would play better as a week to week watch, but this season, because of the slow burn, I feel like it plays better. I feel like it just plays better through a binge. But overall, where I would say season one for me was a blockbuster, I would say season two of The Boys was a hit. Now with that said, I'm still very much looking forward to season three. I can't wait to see Jensen Ackles and I'm glad that he's getting life beyond Supernatural and I'm excited to see what he brings to the table and what he brings to this cast. And then also it'd be cool to see him reunite with Eric Kripke who was original creator and showrunner of Supernatural. And I know they basically announced a college spinoff of The Boys. I'm curious to see how that plays out. I liken it to a rated R version of My Hero Academia. But my overall reaction when I saw that the news broke that they were doing a spinoff of The Boys, I was like, so is this spinoff going to have more black indigenous people of color than the main show? I hope so. That's enough about me ranting. The question is, what did you guys think of season two of The Boys? How do you think it compares to season one? Let me know down in the comment section below. Also, if you can't hit that thumbs up button and like this video to really help out the channel. If this is one of your first time watching one of my videos, please check out the other videos on my channel. And if you like what you see, please subscribe for more and hit that bell notification button so you're alerted every single time I post a new video and tell your friends, families, and neighbors about my channel to help me continue to grow. And as always, I will catch you guys next time.